How are you doing? Good, I'm glad to know that you're doing well. Using my other computer, so as I was demoing GSN3 for my Python class over here, it's a little different. Cameras on the bottom. Okay, so while we wait for everybody to join, we have a couple minutes left. Please check out your lab three which is gonna be on sets. You can find it on Canvas. Hi, how are you? Other ways. Okay, so we have another minute. Let me share screen. Actually, before I do that, Okay, welcome back. We are gonna do our next lab this week. Um, right now we're gonna do lab three. Let me share screen. Let me turn off my video because the camera is a little low. All right, so this week we are gonna do lab three. Um, and we are going to work with set. So you can find the lab document here. Okay. And then don't forget that we are also have a homework assignment for our quiz review. We have a quiz next week. So make sure that you complete this as well this week. Okay. So the lab is not due tonight, but if you finish it tonight, you can turn it in. Um, and then we have a couple of days, so the lab is due in two days and your, your assignment is due on March 7th. Okay, so let's talk about the lab that we have to do. Um, a little bit introductory in sets. It's slightly different than the other language, but you're gonna see some similarity with C++. Um, some of you, if you took data structure class, you might have come across set STL. So we are using set STL today, uh, which is the library that we're going to incorporate in our program. And keep in mind that when you include set, um, you will see that when you create your set, it's going to be pre sorted. That means that it's going to organize ascending order going from low to high. Then next, um, it's also going to have to contain a unique object. We touch on this in the lecture that it cannot have repetition of values. And importantly, um, it says that once it's in the container, it cannot be modified. So you're going to treat it like frozen set in Python or tuple, right? Um, 
But in this case, once it's in there, we cannot update the value. And as it is only going to contain, it's always going to contain const or constant value. And you can use the built-in functions um, to be able to add element to the set or to take away the element by removing it. And it is a little bit slower than an unordered set if you have it pre-ordered um, compared to accessing individual elements. And as any container that would contain a group value, we would normally use an iterator or a way to iterate through each element. So often you would see a for loop being implemented in the program. So to start, we are gonna start with inserting element. And when you insert an element, you introduce a value, a new value to that container. And what that will do is it's gonna increase the size automatically. So think of it like an, a dynamic array where as you add in the elements, you're gonna see that it's gonna change in size. So we can start with an empty set and then we can gradually insert in each of the element. We can use a loop to do that or we can just simply implement insert as insertion would check each of the insert element to make sure it's equal. So every time that you insert an element, it's gonna go to the container and it's gonna see if that element already exists or not. If so, then it's not gonna add that element. So if you have something that's in the same value, let's say that if I have a 10 and I'm trying to insert another 10, it's not gonna insert the second 10 because the 10 already exists. So what we want is we want to make sure that each element is gonna be unique. And so therefore there's a mechanism that it does check it with the built-in function for that STL. So when it returns, um, if we wanted to go through and actually find the value or print out the value, we can have it look through and print, or we can find specific location of the element and print. Now in here, what it talks about is the insertion function and also the set container keep all the elements sorted so there's a pre-sorted mechanism that's already built in if you're using set STL in C++. So now it talks about parameters to determine how el many elements you can insert. So what you can do is you can specify the, the, not the element that you want to insert or the number of elements you want to insert. So here, what you see is the screen capture of the program itself. And I'm gonna go ahead and open that up in my REPL. So what we can see here is at the top, you would have IO stream for input and output. You're gonna include set STL. So at, in this lab, we're gonna do that. And everything we're gonna build into the main function for, for C++. Now, again, you can use your IDE or if you wanted to use an online compiler like this one, that's fine, you can do that. You can also add in the third line using namespace STD. And if you do that, you don't have to add each of these for each line. For <clears throat> the line six in the main function, we basically declare our set is called my set. So at this point, what you're doing here is you declare set my set. And this set is gonna hold the integer. So in here, the type needs to be specified. As you know, that C++ is, uh, we have to use data type with C++ to make sure that it knows what that, what type of values we're using. So here we're using whole numbers, which is integer. 
we're also declaring an, an iterator called it, okay? And we simply declare that by using the keyword iterator. And this iterator allows us to access the value as it would be in the container. So I will put here for you to see that we declare iterator call it. Okay. Now with the set STL, it has the functionality with the pair. And the pair would reference the first value or the second value in that pair. And this is why you would see the first and the second here, okay? The reason why we want to do this is as we are using the set, we want it to point to the position in the set where it would be able to check to see if that value already exists or not. As the concept in set, would be that it has to hold unique values only. So with this, what we're saying is that we are gonna utilize the set that's gonna be holding integer, our iterator. We also gonna include the bool type, which is allowing us to use true or false. And we are gonna have RET. RET is later declared here for the individual insertion. But before we get to that point, let's talk about line 11. So line 11 is a for loop. And like any for loop, we would start with the first. So in this case, we would start with the integer. We, we would start with one. And we're gonna go up to five. Okay, so it's going to stop at five, not before five, because here we have the greater and equal. So, and it's going to increment every time. So it's going to start at one and it's the, for the first round, the second loop is going to go to two and then third is three and four and five. Now in each round, it's going to insert one, it's going to insert i, which starts at one, and it's going to multiply it by 10. So what we're doing here is we're using a for loop to insert the value into this, the container called my set. And for each of the value, we would take starting with one, we would multiply it by 10. So your my set would end up having 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So if we wanted to insert 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, et cetera, what we can do is we can implement a loop like this and be able to have it loop through and we would utilize the insert function and have it operate the arithmetic to be able to, to put the, the values into that container. Next, what we're gonna do after this, so at this point, you would have a set that would have these values. That's what the comment shows, okay? Then line 13, what it's gonna do, it's gonna try to reinsert number 20. And you would see my output here, there's only one 20. There's not two number 20s, okay? So when we do, when we insert 20 again, it's not going to put 20 in the second time because it already has a 20 from the last line, line 11. Then what this is showing you is that we can automate this and have it loop through and automatically insert in the values, a group of values based on our desire. Then line 13, you can manually insert the value, okay? You simply use the set identifier or the name of the set that you declared, and then you utilize the insert function and you would put in the, for the parameter, the value that you want to insert. And we put this into RET, so that way we can use it for other things down the line.
Okay, so basically we declare a variable and that variable is gonna, that object is gonna be for inserting 20. Then next, we have an if statement. And in the if statement, we wanted to check, right? So we wanted to verify. So here, what it's gonna do is gonna point to the second. So if we're looking at the set, right? It's gonna look at things in pair, okay? So what it's doing is it's gonna check. So if you wanted to, for it to check if number 20 exists or not, right? If it doesn't exist, then you would add 20 or, or at this point, what we're doing is we're positioning our pointer right here, right at 20, okay, for line 15. So what we're doing was we're pointing to the element 20. Now, if you, want to, and if you wanted to verify and, and find information about the pair, like first and second, you can go to the set STL for the C++ reference. It talks about how you can implement the pair, see? And here it says that the pair first set for the iterator pointing to either newly inserted element or the equivalent element already in the set. Pair second element is a pair that is set to true if the new element was inserted, false if the element, element already exists. So the reason why we set it to false is because we know that 20 is already exists, okay? And if you, if, let's say that you wanted to have an element that doesn't exist, then you would set it to false where it would point to that empty location and it would then point, we be, will be able to insert the next value. So what we want is we want to point to 20 because subsequently we wanted to add in additional values following 20, which is gonna be 24, 25, and 26. So line 17, 18, and 19 is following this if because we wanted to add in 24, 25, and 26. And sequentially, you see that it's out of order. Okay, 25 is greater than 24. But when it outputs it, remember that it is going to have a sort mechanism. So it's going to organize everything by order for us. Okay, so 17 through 19, those lines basically allow you to insert individual value. And now when we do this, the reason why the comment you see here, no max efficiency inserting, why is that? Because we're not ordering, right? Like it, it mentioned in the notes that when you are inserting individual value and you don't have it done in order, that's not, it's gonna be less efficient compared to if you are doing it efficiently, okay? And then, after that, here's another technique. The third part in this main function is another way that you can insert. So what you can do is you can declare an array and in that array, it's gonna hold a group of numbers, five, 10, and 15. Since 10 already exists in the set from the beginning with line 11, 10 is not gonna be inserted. But what you can do is you can have a subset or a group of numbers, and then you can use an array to insert that array into the set. So at this point on line 22, it shows you a different technique on how to use insert. And so we are inserting an array called my ints. And then in that array, we are gonna insert three values. 5, 10, and 15, but then again, 10 already exists. So it's not gonna put 10 into the set, but we still have to put three because our array contains three values, okay? After that, we're gonna output, we would say my set contains, and we would use a loop 
to go from the initial element, which is the begin, all the way to the end, and we're gonna iterate through. Next line, we're gonna use the pointer, right? It, the iterator, to be able to see out each of the elements. So it shows my set, and it's gonna go from low to high. So from the beginning to the end, the beginning we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Then we try to insert 20, it's gonna not do it. We point to 20 and we're gonna insert 24, 25, 26. So it's gonna add those in there in the middle. And then we use an array to insert a group of values, five, 10, and 15. So it's gonna throw those in the front because it's gonna sort them. And we use a loop to go from the beginning to the end to print it out, right? Print the values out so we can see, okay? So when you run this, you're gonna see the output like this. Now in the lab, after you look at the program, you are gonna follow this template like what we did last time, but you would use insert function and you, I want you to insert 30, 40, 50, 60. Now it doesn't matter what, you know, so you would use this program and add on to it. That's what I want you to do, okay? Follow the example one, create this program and you would add in a line. It doesn't matter whether you wanted to use a for loop or if you wanted to do them individually or if you put them in an array, that's up to you, okay? So once you have this, run the program, once you have this added, run the program and make an observation. I asked you, what is your observation when inserting these values, okay? So answer the questions, you can type it directly onto the document. And then I want you to show me the screenshot that you added, right? The line to insert or lines to insert 30, 40, 50, 60. If you wanted to do it individually, that's fine. If you wanted to make it an array, that's fine. Or a for loop, that's fine. So there are three techniques that's shown in the program, okay? So that is part of one. Then number two of exercise one, or the example one, for number two, I want you to Follow the example, refer to the example one, and I need you to create a set that contain numbers that are different than what you've seen that what you've been doing. You can put in like 55, 56, 57, it's up to you, okay? Then you're gonna try to re, you're gonna attempt to insert these number and, and then output. And I, so that means that your set's gonna grow from what you previously had, right? From the example to number one. So in number two, you would have additional numbers that's gonna be added. And you can add like as few as two, you can go up to five, however many you want to add. If you wanted to write a loop, that's gonna iterate through and add a hundred more numbers, more power to you, okay? So once you, complete that, you would give me a screen capture showing that you have added different numbers. So I can go from like 70 to whatever number that I desire, right? And, and then I need a screen capture showing that your program worked and you know how to utilize the insert method with set STL, okay? So you can pick the approach that you wanted to use based on the example that you see. Any question with number one and number two, for example one?
Okay. All right. So next, what we're going to do is no rush, right? You can go through and do that. If you have any questions, please stop me and ask. Okay, next we're going to talk about iterator. You saw that in example one. Okay. And here it, it says it gives you a brief definition of iterator. The iterator provides a means for accessing data stored in the container or pointing to an item that is part of a larger container of the items. Okay. So you So you saw last time, I don't know if I'm getting voice here, but let me, one second. My headphone just cut off. I'm just using the computer headphones, but let me add my Bluetooth real quick, I apologize. All right, let me go back to screen share. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so we talked about iterator and the iterator is allowing us to point to an item that is in our set container. And it says that returns an iterator referring to the first element of the set container because the set container keeps the element ordered at all time. Remember in the last one, we talked that it's pre-ordered. It has a sort mechanism. Um, and it would start with the beginning point if you tell it to begin at the beginning of your set. So that will go to the first element of the container. And if the container is empty, um, it, the return iterator value is, shall not be dereferenced. So what we can do is we would use begin with our iterator and our iterator to the first element is going to be the default, right? So if it, you, you say begin, that's going to point to the first element of your, of your set. So here it talks a little bit about the const iterator. And the const iterator is a bidirectional iterator where it can point to multiple elements where if we earlier we saw that how we would point to number 20 by using the iterator call it. Now in example two, it also used set STL. It's a shorter program. Let me get back to my repo in example two. So here is my program and I have set STL. I have IO stream, so I include these. Okay. And again, if you wanted to add using namespace STD, that's fine. You don't have to do this STD colon colon. But if you follow the example, that will be okay too. Everything is in main. We have an array call my ints. So here we declare an array and in our array, that's gonna hold integer. We have 75, 23, 65, 43, and 13. It's out of order, right? We don't have it in order to start with. Then what we do here is we are gonna establish a set so here we're saying that our set is going to contain integer and its name is my set. And we are going to plug in, right, the values, five values from the array called my int. Okay, so the way that you use the parameter here, the arguments here is that you have the array and then the number of values that you wanted to put in from that array, okay? 
So this one, we skip the insert function, right? You can, it, we can automate this just using set STL, give it a name and then use the parameter. And that's what the last part of the note from the last exercise that I was talking about. Then we have it display my set contains. And here, what we're doing is we are using an iterator. You know it's an iterator as it used the keyword. And its name again is also it. And it's gonna iterate through your set, call my set from the begin. So it's gonna go to the first element, okay? And with this for loop, what we're doing is we're looping through and we are gonna loop through so that way we can print out the value for each element starting from the beginning of the set to the end, okay? So here, because it's a for loop, you have to tell it where it's gonna begin because there are three parts of for loop, where it's gonna stop and how it's gonna update. Okay, so in this case, what we see is we would use the for loop to be able to, to iterate through and point to each element so that way we can have it output. Okay, so when we print this, we would see that it puts everything back in the sorted order. And as it goes through, it's gonna print out 13, 23, 43, 65, and 75, which we start that with our array. Okay, so this shows you a little bit more about how you can create your set, use a for loop with the begin, using the iterator with begin and end and be able to access your values. <clears throat> so for number three, we're gonna refer to example two and we're gonna create that program. Now, after you run the program, I want you to change 75 to 55 or 13 to 33. So after you run the program, because I want you to test to see if it actually updates it, right? And then rerun the program. So what I'm gonna do is I would then go here and let's say that I change this to 33 and then run it, right? So it did update it because we changed it in the array itself. And as we update the container, right? It's gonna plug in the values in the array at this line. <clears throat> and then it's gonna then loop through and show the value. So 33 instead of 13, 33 is now showing here. Okay, so for number three, you're gonna pick a value and you're gonna change it. We run the program. I want you to describe the output, right? Did you see the change? What did you see as the output? Give me a screen capture. Then for number four, I want you to get rid of all the elements in the array. Okay, and run the program. Give me the screen capture, explain what happens. Remember we talked about how a set could be an empty set. Now, when you edit the program, keep in mind that, remember that our program to start with, we had five elements in our array to put in, okay? When you clear out this, right, should you change something here for, as you are creating that set, okay? Now, when it's an empty set, remember it talks about how it would iterate through. If it's an empty set, it doesn't dereference that, right? So what you would see as the output, so I wanted you to experience what that would be. 
if you start with an empty set, with an empty array. Where did you declare it? Right here within the for loop. You can do that as well. If you use the keyword iterator, you just give it a name next to it. So I can have iterator, my iterator, right? Or my IT. And then, so it's built within the for loop. Now you can do it like the last one, if you wanted to declare it at the top, that's fine, right? But you can also make it like this. Okay, any question with what we have to do for, for three and four? Okay, so don't forget your explanation along with the screen capture. Any question with the last example? I had a question about a uh, part four of that last example. When we're removing the elements, do we use set.clear? What are we using to remove the elements from the set? I want you to, so this on the example two, I want you to just manually clear it, like clear the values in your array. Okay. Yeah. But in the next one, then we would actually use the proper way to remove elements. So I gradually build your knowledge up to that part. Okay. But yeah. Uh -huh. So in the last one, we saw that we manually clear things out, right? To start with an empty set. And an empty set is just a container that contains no value, right? Um, and it, has, it can't give you any output because there's nothing to show, right? So keep in mind that you can set up a container. And when that happens, because the set container, it adjusts the size based on what you put in it, right? It's dynamic compared to some other container, like in with, with array, when, you, when you're not using dynamic array, you have to tell it the length of it, how many elements you're using, okay? So it's kind of similar, set is kind of similar to vector, but in the sense where once you are setting it up in a set, you cannot just go and update individual element. What happens is if you, when you changing the value in the last example, you still have to go through the process of putting the updated value in a certain position. Now, all it did was it's gonna point to the location of that element with the with the the new value that you had changed in the second round that you ran that program okay so if you're trying to go through and you're trying to update those things because they're constant right set is pretty fixed in that once you put it in the, that container it's designed to be that it's because it creates that container with those value and it stays the same so if you took my Python class, this is equivalent to frozen set, okay? 
And if you wanted things to be updated, perhaps think about vector or another container that you would use. So that way it is more flexible in how you would be able to update. So let's say that I need a container to, um, you know, have, have prices for my products. And I want, you know, price change over time because, you know, depends on the fluctuation of the market. Then I have to think about as a developer, when I write that program, I have to think about how this container is gonna scale over time, how my application is gonna scale over time for this company, okay? But, you know, since the, the mathematics side we talked on set, I want you to see how that's done in C++. Okay, next part, we're going to talk about clearing content. When you remove all elements from the set container, which it destroys that because it needs to adjust the, the set to lessen the size of that set, right? The set would grow as you insert element and as you remove the element it destroys the element so it gives back that space so it reduces the size of that container and as you get it down to an empty set you would have the size of that container to be zero okay and we talk about cardinality on tuesday right so in the cardinality, that will be zero. So if I start out with 10 elements, my cardinality would be 10. And as I remove each of the element in each round, let's say with the for loop, then when I get to the last round, it would be completely destroyed, right? All the values are destroyed and the size of the set is reduced down to zero with an empty set. So, in this program, what we're going to see, let me bring this over to clear content. We also use the set SDL, everything we can operate in the main because, you know, it's pretty straightforward and simple. We are going to use insert. So first we declare a set, our set going to contain integer we are gonna insert individual element in this one. So we're gonna start with 100 and then we're gonna to go to 200 and then we're gonna to go to 300. Then it's gonna print, right, using for loop. It's gonna iterate through my set and it's gonna show 100, 200, 300. So it's gonna start with the first element with the begin here, we already talked about that and it's gonna update through, it's gonna show me 100, 200, 300. Then I'm gonna do a clear, okay? And clear just destroy 100, 200, 300 in my set. So at this line, what happened is you gonna, my set is empty, okay? Then, I'm gonna reuse my container, my set, and I'm gonna insert in 1101, 2202. And then once again, I'm gonna use my iterator with the for loop to print out the value. So by the end of the program, your my set contains two elements, right? which is <clears throat> 1101 and 2202, okay? So if you wanted to clear, the proper way is to clear it with the function. And, and you know, this is a built-in function for the library. So when you incorporate that library, you can you utilize that function to be able to clear the content. Okay, and then you can add in new content. So a real world example would be that, you know, let's say that you have a business and that business sells t-shirts. Um, and after a few years, they're not making money. So they're gonna switch that to a different product. They're no longer selling t-shirt. Now they're selling hats. Then what you have to do is you have to clear out the container 
to update the prices for the hats instead of the t-shirts and then the sizes, the color, you know, the description, et cetera, right? So we can clear that out and make it an empty set and then we can insert in the values. And I would do a loop just to make it easy, right? If it's gonna increment, you know, the same. So when I run this, so we saw that to 100, 200, 300 was put in, then they, be, they were destroyed. Our set became empty in the middle and then we reinserted two values. So at the end, your set actually contains only 1101 and 2202. So for number five and six, you're gonna to refer to example three. And also it touches on how all iterators, pointers and references related to this container are in, invalidated. The container is modified right throughout the program and all contained elements are modified. So you saw that the container changed throughout the program. Now for number five, you are gonna use example three, run the program first, right? And when I asked which set is clear, I meant which number were destroyed, right? We saw that 100, 200, 300 were destroyed it's still gonna be the same set name, but the same set, the same container that you started out with, but you destroy 100, 200, 300 by using the clear function. Now, if you replace the myset.clear when you using a insert method instead of a clear method, and you are passing a zero, what happens? Okay, tell me the result and give me the screen capture. Now you have to think about that because when we clear, we destroy the element. When we insert zero, is there an element? How does the iterator work? Any question with this? No question? Okay. Now I hope that I don't require a lot of these, you know, sub lab in the project. There are some labs that you would see that it would be incorporated in the project when we work with graphs or stuff like that. But with this knowledge, I hope that you're able to use this for your C++ program in general, not just for this class, but for future classes or for your, you know, for your career or for the things that you need to do with programming. Um, now, if you write the project and you use sets, that's fine, that's great, that I see that you are applying the concept and the knowledge that you acquired throughout this class. Um, I try to make it where it's parallel to the mathematical the discrete math concept. So that way you can see that what we're learning in math, we can, we, we can incorporate that in programming. And the part in implementing algorithm is to be able to 
build procedures to, to solve the problem ultimately. And a lot of the problems that we see for business environment or for real world is, you know, it incorporates math. So um, with this, you understand a little bit more about the set STL, how to use, you know, the common functions in set STL and, you know, the, the, the um, side effect or the how how you use a function in your program and what would be the output. So you you make a good observation about you know how to implement these things using set STL. Okay. And there are a lot more functions or methods you can look at in the library. Um, you know, we're only using some of the common ones, right? Things like empty, erase, insert, clear, begin, end. But if you look at the C++ reference, you will find a lot more and you can read each one on, on if you need to use it. This one is a, a short lab, so only four exercises. Usually I do like four to six, six at the most, but Overall, it gives you some time to evaluate it and play with it a little bit more. Okay. So when I taught CIS 17C before, I spent a whole week on, well, every, I think every week we incorporated some library in our program. And then because that class is, you know, data structure oriented. So we, we try to incorporate some of these built-in functions with um, the data structure and be able to write. So I approach 17C a little bit different, but then we also talk about efficiency and um, how to really work with container and your data and data type. And I haven't taught 17C for a while now. So because there are faculty that, that wants to teach that class. And I love teaching seven. I think seven is really fun because I like math and I like seeing how that would be in different languages, like different programming languages. So, all right, let's talk about the last one. And we might wrap up things a little earlier today, but I'll stick around for questions if you need help. So in the last exercise, we're gonna work with empty as a function. So in set for empty function, it returns the set, whether the set container is empty or not, where the size would be zero. And this function does not modify container in any way, but if you officially wanted to clear and, and size the, the container down, then you would use the clear like the last example. So to clear the content of the set container, we would use clear return value is true if the container size is zero and false otherwise. So when you're using empty, you're just checking to see if it's empty or not. So let's say that I, I use the clear function. I would say my set dot clear and I wanted to see if it's empty or not, I can use my set dot empty. Okay, so you do, you saw empty being used throughout the exercises already, right? In, in the loop, it would say, you know, from begin, 
and my set is not empty so it's going to go to the last element in which where it's not empty then it's going to update um, so in this example example four you include set SEL, you include io stream and everything is in the main you declare my set and my set hold integer and for eight through 10, very similar to what you've seen in all the other programs, you are inserting individual element 20, 30, 10. Then you are gonna output my set contains. And here in this one, a little different than the other ones, you're using a while loop. And it says while my set is not empty, be careful with this because there's an exclamation, the not operator is here. While my set is not empty, output, right, my set from the beginning, okay? And in this one, it's also gonna erase, okay, as it goes through. So let me run it so you can see the behavior of this program. So, what we would have is at remember, right? That we are printing my set contains, we inserted, okay? And at the while loop, it says while my set is not empty, it's gonna point to the begin value, which is 10, right? Because it's sorted, then it's gonna go to 20 and then it's gonna 30, but it's going to erase as it goes, OK? So if you wanted to do something to clarify whether your set is empty or not, you can write an additional statement and see if it's empty or not, right? And if it is, then it's going to output true, OK? And if it's not, you can have it show, show the output. So you can add more to this and see if it checks it, right? So look at the program. I want you to experience the program. Test example four. Notice the while loop is used with set empty function. Explain the purpose of the while loop in relation to the output. Okay, so check it out. Look at the while loop explain to me what the while loop does, okay? And give me a screen capture. And that would wrap up for lab three. Now, if you wanted to experience a language that would cover a lot more, uh, you know, the module, the library with the programming language that that's, you know, that covers all the stuff that we talked about with Venn diagram and all of that, as you heard me mention Python, Python, non-frozen set, regular set, um, you can use a method to check to see if, you know, if it is a certain way, right? Two sets, you can do set comparison very well with Python. Um, and you simply, and it's all built in and it has that capability. So if you wanted to learn programming language using set, right? Python is very easy to learn, it's fun. Um, and then Python is used for a lot of different things, but you know, you can check that out. Tutorials online, it's probably good. They have some really great um, resources, so you can also check that out. But C++ is a good ground to build on, especially when you wanted to venture out to learn other languages. Okay, any question?
this is a shorter lap compared to all the other ones. So um, I might expand it for the next semester, adding some additional, some additional functions so that way we can play with it a little bit more. But now if you wanted to pre-read for next week, okay, um, we are gonna go into counting chapter eight or the next chapter. I think the next edition of the book, um, they relabel the chapter because as they add an earlier chapter, but you would need to read the next chapter. And then we would, from there, we, so we're gonna work with permutation, combinatorics, that's what counting really means. As you kind of saw how we looked at combination already when we talked about set this week with pairs and then with the tuple. <clears throat> so next week, we're gonna get into permutations, combinations, and then the following week. So chapter eight is broken into two parts. The following week, we're gonna also get into like probability um, and we will continue from there, okay? And then we'll come back to cryptography down the line. Okay, any questions, concern, comment? If you are finished, you can turn that in. You can submit that on Canvas. Um, and I do hold an extra credit session with the school from Iraq tomorrow morning. So if you wanted to attend that, you can. And type your name in the chat if you're finished. Have a good evening. I'll see you on Tuesday. I'm sorry, Monday. <laughs> on Monday, I keep thinking you guys are Tuesday and Thursday. Bye. I'll stick around for questions if you have questions. Uh, Professor, one quick question about yes. this part uh, for an example too. So uh, when we remove the elements from mm -hmm. the set, is it okay if we just do, um, I used a set dot erase for each yeah. element, is that okay? You can do that. You can look through and erase each one. Okay, oh, perfect. Like, That's what... Mm -hmm. like what you've seen in the last example. Good, then you're applying your knowledge. That's exciting. Okay, great. Okay, that awesome. Was... That was my only question. I'm pretty much done. <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much. You're welcome. Professor? Yes. Hi, I am. Um, I put all the examples into my programmer or my processor and um Every time I run, I get the correct output, except there's also five extra integers after the correct output. Which program are you doing? Um, well, it did it for all the examples.
you one second. Let me, I wanted to see what you're referring to. Give me one second. Let me, okay, can you share your screen? Yeah. So yeah, it puts out these values afterwards and it does that for all of the programs. Let me see your code again. The main CPP, yeah. Possibly it's for net beans, okay. Our Did it plug in for line 20? Did it plug that in for you or you had that written in? I what had this mean? written in. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what's the purpose of that? Can you tell me? Um, I'm not sure. It just does it on all the, that's like the format they give you. Yes. Yeah, so that it automatically plugged that in for you. Okay, so yeah, so basically it, it, it's saying that you can put in the arguments, integer, character, all of that. Um, yeah, so what, let me see your output again. It's putting something, it looks like it's an address. Yeah, 5, 10, 20, yeah, so your output is correct. I think at the end, um, it's showing, you know, 12, 14, two. Yeah. I think it's referring to a location. And that probably is just the output. It's saying that that container exists at that location and it would be that for that value. Um, and it's only happening when you're using set SCL, I would assume, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I think that this number in the last part, the 12142, uh -huh. that one is referring to a location or uh, it would relate to some sort of address for that so container. Is there a way I could remove that then? I don't know yet. I have to find out how NetBeans is used because I don't really use NetBeans. Uh -huh. um, but I will find out for you and I will be able to give you a definite answer maybe on the next session. Okay. So yeah, I got to play cause... with it a little bit more because I'm not familiar with, I mean, I've used NetBeans a long time ago and I haven't used it for years. So it could be that it's putting something in there. And, um, you know, so going back to, because your program is exactly like how we would write based on the example. Yeah. But, um, I'm going to find out why NetBeans does that. Okay, because okay. I've never had that come up before, so I was kind of confused. Yes, so it, I think it probably is just the IDE that's adding that in, but we we have to find out how we're going to be able to ex not put that in because it's confusing. Okay, but would would this be fine to submit if I like oh, changed yeah. it up to answer the questions? That's fine. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. You're welcome. Other questions? Oh, I figured it out. I read the chat. It was, it was with the NDEL. Oh, <laughs> I didn't see that. Okay, thanks. That makes sense. So that will be, yeah, uh, your new line is mistyped. Yeah.
Why do we have to do reference the set when we display the element? Because it actually point each of the item or the element in a, a separate position or different area as it dynamically allocated. Um, sets is dynamically storing, so you don't have sequential, you don't have sequential uh, placement of the value in that container. So you have to do reference it. Okay, because in 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 a container that would have sequential, you don't have to point to it as much. So if you think about memory location, it doesn't necessarily put them adjacent to each other. That's what I'm saying. And I hope I answer your question. You understand that. Yes. And with an array, when you look through, because it's a sequential, it's linear, right? It goes, you know, you go element zero as the first, et cetera. When you, because when you put it in a set, originally it's unordered. And then because the way they wrote the library, they have it reordered. So your values in, is in all different places. It's not together and it's not cohesive going from, you know, it's not ascending by nature. Um, as you place it in the container, it could be, you know, the largest one first, whatever, right? And so that's why we have to use some kind of iterator with the pointer to be able to look at, right, the value or access the value in that container because they are non-sequential. You're welcome. Other questions? Okay, bye Jose, have a good night. Thank you. Good night, you're welcome. After we delete the elements for question four from this set, what's being displayed in memory, the address of the elements? I'm kind of confused. Yeah, so if you manually clear things out, right, from, from the original array, it doesn't, it doesn't give you any value anymore. It, it is a set that contains no value. The proper way to remove values from the set is to use arrays or clear. Clear is to clear everything and array is to take them each out individually. So when you when you manually just backspace and, and clear it out inside the array, it it still has that location and that location still exists because it doesn't resize the container or destroy that location. Okay, so you're still pointing to a location that has nothing. So you're on the right track. Let me see if I can go back and 
show you. Number two. So if I clear everything out for my array, right but i still tell it to if i still leave the five here basically what that did was it's just gonna say that i'm gonna i'm gonna make a set and i have five blank position for my elements right showing on the right hand side is memory location and this vary from one, one system to the next. So on this, on this compiler, um, on the on REPL, it shows this on Replit, right? But but if you use it, if you use Visual Studio, it might output slightly different because it's just you know how that compiler handles that. So what it did was it's it's giving you what you're asking for, but there's nothing for it to point to. So it's a location of memory that contains nothing. But we created five location for that set with no values. When I have it like that for number four. Okay, does that clear up your question? Yes, that is correct. Because I told it to do that with the plus five right here. Now that's if we clear that out, right? But if we issue the clear, then it's gonna take the element away but it, and destroy that. It gives back that location. It's size down your container. And that's the proper way to do the clear for the elements if you wanted to get rid of them. Question? Okay.
Let me know if you have questions. Let me know if you have questions or need help. Hi, Jessica. Most people have already finished, but we worked on the lab. Um, and I went through the exercises. So if you take a look at the lab and if you have any question, let me know. And thanks for joining.
So this is the first program that we did. We learned to use insert with using the iterator. And then we use the loop to output pointing to the values in the set. That's fine. I'm okay with that. And I thank you for popping in, um, you know, but I'm just sticking around in case people have questions. And, you know, if you wanted to watch the video down the line, speaking of that, I'll just go ahead and stop recording. Otherwise it'll just be a bunch of quiet time at the end. <laughs> 